meeting of the Harwich Conservation Commission on Wednesday, April 3rd, 2024 in the Don B. Griffin Room at Town Hall. This is a hybrid meeting. Participation can be in person or online through GoToMeeting. Anyone who is watching this on TV and would like to join online can find instructions on the agenda on the Town of Harwich website. Uh, so we're going to start the meeting with Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you. First item on the agenda this evening is a notice of intent uh, for Zero Pleasant Lake Avenue, map 100, parcel K4-3, SE 32-2555 for a seasonal dock. This is being continued on March 20th. Do we have an advocate or someone to discuss? It's you. It's me. Um, we had still have still not heard from Natural Heritage, and I think that was the only thing we were waiting to hear from. Um, so the um, representative elected not to come and asked that we just continue to April 18th, um, which is a Thursday, by the way. Next meeting is a Thursday because of a holiday bumping us. Um, so I would recommend a continuation to April 18th. Okay. Okay, I'll move for a move for continuance. Okay, and I'll second. And to April 18th. Yes. yes. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 That's six and zero. Next item <clears throat> is a notice of intent for 157 Route 28, map 11, parcel S1-A to install stormwater infrastructure, repave the parking lot, and landscaping. Make sure you saw the Division of Marine yeah, Fisheries letter. Okay. <laughs> Do we Sorry. have someone to speak on this? I'll open up and then I'm going to defer to the experts here. John Rendon, Harbor Master. I'm the applicant mainly because uh, it's uh, a boat ramp and landing there at Route 28 um, on the Herring River. And uh, I'm sure many of you know that facility. Um, it's got a a boat ramp that's in need of repair, and we're looking um, to have a capital project in the coming years to, to, to redo that. Um, but it's just a gravel lot that, uh, you know, is surrounded by salt marsh, and uh, this project um, that is being proposed, um, I think, will be a tremendous uh, improvement to that landing, to that site. And as you probably know right now, there's nothing that stops from storm, runner, storm water running right into the river. And, uh, and the Herring River obviously is a very vital waterway for us. So um, APCC approached uh, the town, I don't know, a year ago or so. I think we've been working at it um, with a proposal. They had some grant funding. Um, to look at different facilities throughout the state uh, and they were looking at those that were most need of some improvements um, stormwater you know retrofit type um, improvements and we scored very high uh, at the Herring River Route 28 because of the condition of it so they put together uh, of course the witness is the uh, engineer contracted engineer for the job and uh, what you see in front of them is their proposal, and um, I'd like to then, you know, pass it on to Gemma, who can go through the, the details of the project. Okay, okay thanks. 
Good evening for the record. Uh, my name is Gemma Kite. I'm the senior environmental engineer with the Horsley Witten Group. Uh, and I'm here tonight with uh, a team of individuals from APCC and uh, my colleagues from Horsley Witten Group. Uh, we'll be co-presenting a, a small, short presentation for you tonight. And I'll hand it over to April Wolpst from the uh, APCC. Thanks, Gemma. Um, and apologies, I couldn't join everyone tonight in person. Um, again, my name is April Vopes, and I'm the Restoration Manager with the Association to Preserve Cape Cod. Um, as John indicated, we're working on this project as part of a regional project to manage stormwater um, across the Cape. Um, and I'm just, I can share my slides. I don't know if you can see them in the room. Hang on, we're going to make you presenter. Okay. Should be good. All right. All right. Can you see those now, Amy? Mm -hmm. Yes. Great. So as John indicated, this is one of the top priority sites that was identified through this regionally funded uh, project. The problem we're really seeking to address is impaired water quality at freshwater and coastal embayments through treating untreated stormwater that's contributing to problems of nutrient impairment from high nitrogen and phosphorus runoff, as well as bacterial contamination causing shellfish or beach closers at some of our top sites. We're specifically looking at public boat ramps because these are often locations of direct discharge of stormwater runoff with little or no treatment of stormwater. So this Herring River site is one of those that has no real um, existing stormwater infrastructure. The short-term goals of this project were to start by developing concept designs for 20 priority public ramps across the region. And again, with this EPA SNEP grant funding and Massachusetts Office of Coastal Zone Management funding, as well as private foundation funding, we've been able to advance plans for seven sites, including this Herring River um, site through design and now through permitting. Um, and we're working to align funding for construction. The long-term goals are really focused on improving the water quality, but also for some sites, um, other habitat and restoration benefits like shellfish bed um, closure reductions and beach closure reductions. The, the key partners here, you know, APCC, we're working with and for the town on this. And as John indicated, we hired Horsley Witten Group as the stormwater engineer. For this site in particular, it's also um, been identified as a priority project under the USDA Natural Resource Conservation Surface um, Cape Cod Water Resource Restoration Project. Um, and so we've been working with NRCS as well as the Cape Cod Conservation District um, to review plans and, and progress this site forward. So last year we completed with these grant funding, the conceptual designs, and as noted, are working through the permitting right now and seeking for this site, we don't yet have secured the funding for the final design and implementation, but hoping to align that funding um, as we move forward. So with that, I'll, I'll let Gemma um, and others from Horsley Witten kind of take over to speak to the specifics of the project. Good evening, my name is Matt Lehman. I'm a design engineer with Horsley Witten. Uh, we need the presentation though. Sorry, I just ended sharing so that maybe you can control it in the room. I could put it back up if you need. Yeah, I can't. He has the controller. So. Uh, oh, I do. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. Where is it going? All right, so the site we've already mentioned is on tw uh, Route 28. It's a boat ramp that we probably are familiar with. Um, the project goal, as April t mentioned, is to reduce the shellfish closures and, uh, you know, the improve the water quality of the discharge from the site. Uh, so we're going to talk about the, how it is right now, the existing conditions, and what the resource areas are, what we've proposed, and the resource impacts will be, and then there'll be time for questions. So the site is located at the start. It's actually located right here. Um, this is what it looks like right now. As uh, it was mentioned before, it's just a gravel parking lot with the very top being paved. Um, the bottom portion of the parking lot is prone to flooding during high tides. Often this whole, this whole area will be inundated. Uh, the total drainage area is about a third of an acre, and about half of that is currently impervious. And my colleague will join me in a sec. 
things at all. Hi, for the record, Amy Ball, senior ecologist with the Lorsey Witten Group. I'm just going to go over a couple of the resource areas that we have. We have a whole handful along the Herring River. This includes um, the, the river itself. The main annual high water is at elevation 2.66, and you can see that, I guess the colors don't show up that well, but um, the blue line that covers the bottom, which is consistent with seeing the lower portion of the um, parking lot under underwater at certain times. Coastal flood zone elevation here is divided between elevations 11 and 13. Um, the dividing line is right here. So technically the, the lower southwest corner of the parking lot is at elevation 13 and then the remainder of the parking lot is at 11. In terms of a 100-year flood zone, I believe the top elevation up here is around eight or nine. So it, under a 100-year storm, this, this entire um, uh, parking lot would be under water. Uh, we also have a coastal bank that is coincident with the, um, the, the parking lot against the road um, and the drive aisles. We have salt marsh that um, surrounds the parking area in the dashed yellow line. I guess the cold's getting to me as well. Yes. <laughs> Oops. And then we also have a, um, your no disturbance salt, 50-foot uh, buffer zone to your salt marsh. And then, of course, a 100-foot uh, riverfront area that actually encompasses the entire site. So we've got a lot of resource areas here. Um, and then I'm going to turn it back over to <laughs> <laughs> Just to talk about the proposed conditions, then we can talk about the comments later. Hello, Matt Lehman again, Torsley Witten. Uh, so we're proposing to uh, repave the top driveway entrances. Uh, they're currently paved, but crumbling and not in good condition. Uh, and to this line right here, it would be paved. So this would all be paved. And uh, the purpose of that is to reduce the sediment load that currently comes off uh, the unpaved area, which is a heavy s source of uh, pollution. And the bottom, oops, sorry. The bottom half or the southern half would be permeable interlocking pavers uh, that would be, that would stabilize the area, also not contributing to the sediment load and uh, would hopefully allow water to dissipate into the ground after, more quickly than pavement would do after inundation events. And then on the west and east sides, we're proposing uh, bioretention areas here and here. And this is an inlet and a forebay, inlet and a forebay. Um, and those will be uh, wetter than a normal bioretention would be. Um, let's see, sorry about that. So there'll be four-way, like I said. It'll be wetter than a normal uh, bioretention would be because it's so close to groundwater and so close to the uh, tide, tidal zone. Um, but it'll still function to treat uh, stormwater in the same way by infiltrating it and the nutrient uptake of the plants. I think it's Amy again. So um, by virtue of the resource areas we just discussed, obviously we have quite a bit of impacts to resource areas, but it's all under a redevelopment situation. So largely it is replacement of gravel areas with a pervious pavement, um, re repaving a portion of the um, parking lot. All of this is happening in riverfront area and um, within the buffer zones and in the flood zone and within the buffer zone to the coastal bank. So um, our impacts all are quantified in, the, um, in, the, in our report. We have about 60 linear feet, again, of coastal bank impacts. This is the repaving of the two drive aisles that, that enter off of Route 28. Uh, the riverfront area and the flood zone elevation are both basically the entire limit of work because they occupy the entire area. Um, and then the 50-foot buffer zone to the salt marsh um, occupies about, the, the impacts occupy about 9,000 square feet. Those impacts are essentially repaving an existing, you know, paved or semi-impervious area. We're also adding some vegetation to enhance the buffer zone uh, to the salt marsh. And then we also submitted 
a waiver request to the Conservation Commission to allow for that activity to occur within your zero to 50 foot no touch zone. Um, but overall, I think the, the take home message with the project is that it is intended to be an improvement um, upon existing conditions to improve water quality within the resource areas, to improve the buffer zone to the, the salt marsh, and um, generally has an overriding um, environmental and public health benefits. So I think that is our last slide. And so we'll turn it back over to the Commission for questions. Thank you. Thank you. Amy. Well, just a couple things. Oh, oh go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Happens all the time. <laughs> it's a lot of Amy's in various capacities. Um, it's been great to work with the project team over the past year to see it get to this point, um, and I really appreciate the collaboration that went into this. Um, this site is a very difficult site. It can't meet your traditional stormwater management standards just because of its low elevation, proximity to groundwater, tightness. It, it's a very difficult site. So this plan, I think, does the best job you can possibly do to um, help alleviate the issue we have there, which is pretty much untreated stormwater that going right into the Herring River and this area is a degraded um, priority area that um, for a restoration. So the project will do a couple things. One, it will help treat stormwater a little bit pri or better prior to it infiltrating eventually towards Herring River, but instead of flowing directly to it, um, because even though it is not paved at the bottom, it's so hard packed, it's practically impervious. Um, the porous pavers will help trap some of that sediment and, and the water um, and help it infiltrate better prior, as well as the retention areas. It'll also, the pavers will help better define the lot than it is right now. It, right now, you can kind of, you could easily drive over edges of vegetation um, inadvertently and over time I think the lot has probably gradually grown little bits because of that so the pavers the additional vegetation will help better define that um, I read through your performance standards and um, I'm in agreement that this project meets them this project you are asking to work in our 50 foot no disturb zone but it's an improvement and I think the stormwater improvement that we're going to, or water quality improvement that we're going to see here would meet any mitigation requirements um, for, for work there. One little tiny nitpicky thing, um, the use of yucca in your planting plan is, I'm not familiar with that varietal. I don't know if that's the same one that we, that is sometimes considered mildly invasive. We would just want to make sure I don't know if that one is. I didn't look at the, the scientific name, but there's one that gets pretty pretty aggressive. So I prefer it to see other things, the numbers of other things go up and just have that one omitted. Um, but that's, oh, we did get a letter from at the, uh, I had it this morning from Division of Marine Fisheries. The commissioners all have it. And their main concern is it seems like for the construction process, making sure that there's adequate um, containment measures to be employed to prevent any siltation in marine environment. Um, construction obviously not allowed in the salt marsh. Um, just to reiterate, there's nothing happening to the ramp itself during this. It's just the hillside going down and the parking lot. The ramp will come forward as a separate application um, in the next year or two, John. Yeah. Um, so it's a lot of just con conditions that can easily be put into the orders of conditions regarding containment of the site during work. Um, so I would recommend your approval of the project. Okay. Thank you, Amy. Start with Mark. Thank you. Um, it looks like a pretty interesting project. Really, the only question I've got is why would you not use the permeable pavers all the way down the slope where it calls for bituminous instead? It seems that would break the veracity of the water and also help with absorption. Uh, 
mainly cost. The, uh, the bituminous pavement's quite a bit cheaper. Uh, the slope as well at the top, if you can see the f five, six, seven, eight contours, um, it's 10% slope. So you won't really get a lot of uh, infiltration on a slope like that. So the benefit's reduced. Uh, and like I said, the cost benefit kind of, that was the decision making for that line. I don't necessarily agree with that totally. We've got 30, over 3,200 square feet, and uh, I mean the solid pavement on the slopes for aprons would make sense, but there's a, I think there's a bigger area that could be, could be treated a little better. But other than that, it looks pretty good. It's a very interesting project and very worthy. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Okay, the only question I have. Just to clarify in my mind, are you also asking for a variance to work within the 50 uh, foot no disturbed zone? No. Okay, thank you. That was the only question I had. Brad. Yeah, I've got a couple. I guess I'll stay with Mark's comments. Um, it, it's a 9 to 10% slope where the cars are going to come in. It, it is steep. Is there any potential to reduce that slope from what it is existing? Um, I don't have the existing slope on there, but I am pretty positive we did reduce it slightly from what's existing. Uh, if you look at the existing contour lines, especially the four, five, six on the west side, that's quite a bit steeper than 10%. So I believe we did as much as we could without taking the grading too far into the vegetation, which would have been more vegetation clearing, or uh, changing the existing edge of pavement line, which there isn't, but what our surveyors picked up as the edge of the line. So we tried to keep it within what's already there, not clear too much, and reduce the slope a little bit. A little. There's a lot of compromises. Right. Okay. Um, and I guess related to Mark's comments as well. So one thing I, I was hoping to hear of, of how we're going to quantify mitigation. There's a lot of disruption that tri typically triggers mitigation for us. And so it's not clear what the metrics are for deciding that the, the stormwater improvements qualify for that mitigation amount. I, is there some would, process? Yeah, I mean, it would determine whether you would view, for me right now, the surface that's there, that's at, on, once you get past the pavement, the surface that's there, it is dirt, but for all intents and purposes, it's impervious. So they're not, Things aren't being expanded upon from existing conditions. Yes, you are putting impervious pavers. If you consider those structure, then we can, but in terms of, I, I did not view it as something that was in need of mitigation since they're sticking to an essentially what is, an, in my view, an impervious surface currently going to something slightly more pervious. So that's not something I considered as needing mitigation yeah okay it's good um we spend a lot of time on this topic so yes. i think it's fair to be consistent mm -hmm. um, with these questions mm -hmm. um so in, in terms of quantifying benefits um I, I i agree this is a very positive project and, and it should happen but in terms of quantifying benefits are there any estimates on stormwater reductions uh, in terms of pollutants um, any quantified measures good question improvements So the target water quality storm that we use for design is a one inch storm. And the table on page nine of the stormwater management report um, shows what those treatment percentages uh, would be and what we're providing. So one of the bioretention areas provides approximately two thirds of an inch uh, treatment or 67% of an inch and the other about 50%. Uh, and that's the volume that's treated. And then on the next page, this shows um, the TSS, phosphorus, nitrogen, bacteria removal percentages as well. 
and uh, those are used, those are taken from the EPA, um, the latest EPA pollutant removal curves. Did you find it, Joe? I don't, no, I'm so not it was a separate, you, they provided a separate bound copy of the stormwater oh. report, um, which, so it's not their notice of intent packet, there should have been another that was in your, in your paper packets that you got, hopefully. I apologize if we didn't have those in your paper packets. I don't know where they went. Um, it was online. We could certainly get those to you. I no, know I, that we have them all. I'm just curious about that. It, it's, oh, yep. I, I think if we're going to yep. not consider mitigation, then we, yep. we need to have some firm sense of benefits. Um, how about reduction in shellfish closures? You mentioned that earlier. Any estimates on how we can, what type of reduction we expect to see? I am not an expert in that, but I would guess that would be pretty hard to measure, uh, and it would certainly need its own beyond the scope of this project uh, monitoring. Um, that's something you probably could do, monitor before and after the installation of a project like this. Excuse me, but is this the information here? That it uh, is, yeah. So this one is that second table I mentioned <coughs> that talks about the different pollutant removal percentages. Uh, so you get roughly, well, it depends. You can see it, hopefully. Well, maybe you can see it. It's about, it really range from 58 to 28 percent, basically, and a lot of them are around 50 percent uh, removal. And those columns are pollutant parameters? The see. columns are the different drainage areas, so they're broken up into the different um, where the water goes. DA1A, the top left, and DA2A, those are our two bioretention areas. Um, and they treat that two-thirds and half an inch are shown, and then the rest of them are all pollutant removal percentages. guess the question, I can't really tell from the, the maps that I have where that 50-foot no disturb line goes across. And um, I know it was an orange line in what you put up before. But I don't know if there's any potential to consider Mark's comments to you know, reduce the amount of, of paved surface. It looks like it's more than existing to me. And so, if, it, if that's dipping down to the zero to 50, um, I mean, as a matter of consistency, I think we should talk about that. The new pavement does go into the 50 foot no disturb zone. Um, it is important to note, as Amy over here has mentioned, that just because it's not paved doesn't mean it doesn't act as impervious. And in this case, because it's been driven over for so many years, especially with boats and heavy trailers, it's super compacted. And not only that, but it is a, a sediment source. So in this case, paving it is actually a bent. Just paving it alone without the bioretentions would be an improvement because it's not adding that additional gravel constantly. So gra the, the smaller sediments uh, are where a lot of the pollutants get trapped, especially. And so th you having the constant runoff is much worse than just having pavement alone. It's still, Go ahead. It seems like that's a dilemma for us because the, the pavers, I think we accept that. Mm -hmm. and, but for pavement, new pavement is zero to 50. We can extend the pavers up. Well, I, I just, it's that's a topic of discussion, I think. It's no, no technical problem with extending the pavers up. So that orange line that dips down to the middle of the pavers, that's the zero to 50 line? That's a good point. In the salt marsh? It's not the line of existing pavement, which does kind of, which is all part of that is also in the zero to 50. Yeah. We just want to make sure 
wherever you put it, I would think that you would want to make sure the transition is one going to be a safe transition um, because of the slope and not um, you wouldn't. I think they also put them lower because if it was too steep, is there a possibility of dislodging pavers if it's you know halfway down a steep embankment? I don't know. It was designed to also the, the grades have changed a little bit to pitch the runoff towards the retention basins. Mm -hmm. uh, the other reason is that the inlets for the bioretentions here, especially, but also here, uh, it is a better long-term design to have pavement leading to the stormwater facility than to have these pavers. Uh, you'll have eventually have issues, uh, erosion issues potentially with this being purely paver inlet, but it, it being a paved inlet here and here is a better long-term design. So that was another reason we did it. But like I said, it could be, you know, extended in this flat area here before it transitions up to the steeper portion, if that would be more minimal. Mm -hmm. That's really the only issue I have, mm -hmm. so I, I guess I'll pass and hear from other folks and we can come back to this. Wayne. I think it's a great improvement. I only have one question. What does this proposed water mean by others? <laughs> Where does that go? It looks like it's going out into the river. Yes, yeah, so, um, yeah, thank you for that. So the town is undergoing a, a concurrent project right now to redesign the, the water main line, um, and they are proposing to use this site for some staging of materials, um, as well as eventually they'll, they'll construct the line that goes through this site. So there's nothing permanent on the surface of the ground um, after they've installed the water line, and we've been uh, coordinating with the water department as well as their contractor to just coordinate on, on timing of, of the projects um, and when things are happening. So is the water main gonna go in before this project or are you gonna build this and then tear it up? Our, <laughs> our understanding is that they uh, have not yet gone through permitting. Um, our, depending on funding, um, our construction, um, if we, we get to, to that stage, um, would happen probably in 2020. Uh, five, um, I think is the, the understanding. So we don't quite know, but the, the hope is that this project would not get ripped, this project will not get ripped up. Um, that project would hopefully happen before this. Mm -hmm. Hopefully or for sure. We can't, we don't know, because it's another project that, you know, we're not so much, in, John and I aren't so much involved in, um, and as much as the water department. And this permit is valid for three years, so right. if, it doesn't make sense to do this just to rip it up. Right. Um, so nobody wants to do that, but we're just trying to get the ducks in a row, at least to get this permitted. Um, yeah. We still have a few steps to go for this, funding being a big one, so. Yeah, and especially if they want to use the site for staging and materials for that construction product, this would not be constructed no. by then. <laughs> no, the hope is that first, Yeah. and then this. Could that be an order of conditions that the water may be installed before this project is done? What if the what if for some reason the water main doesn't happen? Yeah, I mean we're working hand in hand with yeah, water. I know, I they fully yeah. are aware of what the project is. They know our needs. Yeah. We know their needs, but we can't forecast ahead. So, mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, I don't think we're going to do a project that's going to get torn up. I hope not. We're, we're allowing one to happen on the 28th, so they're going to eventually tear that up to put the new culvert in. So exactly, doesn't seem to matter too much. No. So that's all I have. Thank you, Sophia. Um, overall, it looks good to me. I had the same nitpicky question about the yucca as Amy did. Um, I think there are probably better options, um, and I think if. If the pavement can be reduced, I'd be in favor mm -hmm. of that as well, just because it's in the zero to 50. If it doesn't make sense with the pitch or the drainage, I'm not really qualified to weigh in on that. So it sort of is what it is, and it seems like an overall improvement. Um, and that's, that's it, no questions. Okay, thank you. I have a couple of questions. Um, one is, 
uh, that you stated that the one of the design parameters was a one inch storm. Does that mean a total of one inches or one inch or is that an inch an hour? So the way that the design <coughs> model works, it's a t it's modeled as a 24 hour storm with a total of one inch of rain off of impervious surfaces. So it's actually more conservative. It's not just one inch of rain. It turns out to be 1.21 inches of rain equals one inch of rain off of impervious surfaces. So that takes into account the fact that dry pavement absorbs a little bit of water and that there's crevices in the water. And so as soon as the water starts hitting the pavement, it does not immediately generate runoff. So that's, it's more conservative than just being one inch. So then, I mean, we've had inch and a half storms, mm -hmm. multiple inch and a half storms. Absolutely. This, this year. Yep. Absolutely. So w this is what's called the first flush of the storm, uh, what's traditionally been considered to be one inch, because it's an easy, nice number to use. That's a very old number, but it's still a good one to use. Uh, a lot of studies are saying even the, the half inch is nearly as effective. Um, but al almost all of the pollutants are contained within that first initial flush of, of water because between the storms, the pollutants accumulate on the pavement, but it's not a whole lot because the storms uh, occur relatively frequently. So just a little bit of volume is required to run off almost all of the pollutants. So in other words, the five inch storm does not run off any more pollutants than the one inch storm. By that time, all of the pollutants are already gone. The 10 inch storm, it doesn't matter how much it is, uh, at that point. So the, the goal of this is not to reduce big storms. It's to treat the m micro pollutants that occur from the small storms, which is, a, which is the best bang for your buck, basically. And not only that, but we're very restricted on space here. So we would love to have treated the full inch, but the okay, 50 so and two thirds. My other question just has to do with design details here. There's a, there's a berm on the east and west side, uh, but no berm on the south side. There's a fence, but no berm. And I, I think I understand from the plan that the slope is a reverse slope in the paver area by a 1% reverse slope. I guess the intent there is to direct the water into the, um, into the floor bay, you call it, of the, um, Mm -hmm. of the swales. Exactly, yep. But my question is about what happens, again, when you have a heavy, heavy rainfall, um, <coughs> isn't that going to wash a lot of stuff just completely off the south end of this thing? And relatedly, the dock is shown there, but it's not really any part of the plan. There's no pavers. And this, there's going to be a lot of traffic over there foot traffic over onto the pier. And I'm also wondering why you wouldn't either show some planting there or show uh, pavers allowing for taking care of the foot traffic out onto the pier. If I'm not mistaken, we stopped the work at the salt marsh line, I think at that location is the reason why we stopped the work there. Right, is there in, in order to not to disturb it. salt marsh on the way onto the pier? If I can, uh, if I can interject, yes, that, that area has quite a lot of salt marsh. Okay. So from your point of view, should just leave it the way it is? I was going to bring up the point. I, I think salt marsh is growing here. I think the east and south side is, is having encroachment of more salt marsh in recent years, particularly the southeast corner. Um, I was going to suggest plantings that maybe focus on that, because I think the salt marsh is coming with you, like mm -hmm. it or not. So I think the plantings maybe should reflect that. And for that area you're talking about, I, I get your point. Um, but I don't know if we want to be covering up salt marsh in the, in the resource area. So there's going to be foot traffic going over that. Mm -hmm. Don't you want to try to contain the foot traffic? So maybe, maybe I, I don't know. It's a question. I don't really John know. John might consider extending the, the gangway um, and something like that. I, I, I get what he's saying. We'd have to kind of be on site to really mm -hmm. tease this out. But Can I 
ask, what's the dock used for primarily? It's for access to the public float, which holds the dock to the plug. Yeah. Oh, sorry. So you have a, a ramp that goes to a fixed dock that goes down to a public float. And that public float is where people load people, stores, they tie their boats off, they load kayaks and canoes. And so that is uh, busy in the summer, no doubt, access to that um, fixed pier. We could easily add some sort of stabilization, a small stabilized pathway that I agree that would be better. I, I was unaware of a lot of foot traffic. And again, we were trying not to disturb the salt marsh, but if that's what you prefer, we certainly could add small pavers. Um, or, or you could do a marsh mat or something like that. Yeah. Where it offers a little stabilization and shows people like. where they should go. Yep. Maybe that's three or four feet wide, but also doesn't inhibit too much growth. It's a tough question, you know. Yeah. Sea levels come up so much in this area in mm -hmm. recent decades, and so you, you're just seeing fiddle crabs and salt marsh just expand yeah. up on that southern area and the eastern area. And people just walk across that and go up on the ramp. So I, I don't know what the best solution from a permitting standpoint. I think we'd probably favor nothing. Yeah. But okay, all right. But I suppose after the fact, you come look see how it looks and, and maybe make some decisions then. But I don't think we extend the pavers and cover up that habitat because it's very functional. It's not compacted like in the parking lot. Yeah. Okay, so I made the mistake of asking two questions, <laughs> uh, not letting you, giving you a chance to answer the first question before I ask the second question, but I still have the first question, which is uh, what happens, I mean, why is there not a berm on the south side there to contain, you know, Contain the water in a heavy downpour. That was a design choice to try to keep the <clears throat> proposed edge of paving inside, at or inside of the existing edge of pa compacted terrain. Um, and because of the way that, like you mentioned, the one percent backslope, which is long, uh, the uh, the whole distance of the parking lot basically. Plus the fact that the natural terrain slopes up there. Mm -hmm. And again, I in an effort to reduce paving, we decided not to add there. Uh, I, d I haven't done any calculations, but I do not believe that it will be a problem. Excess runoff. I mean, isn't that what's happening? That's happening right now, right? That's the condition. Which is? That there's a sloped surface heading right towards that area. Actually, way less familiar with this particular site than other people here. So Good. the lot cuts right to the ramp. Yeah. As we're, when it rains the past couple of weeks, it's been just flowing water right alongside the ramp. Oh yeah. I so it, it cuts right there, but some does spill out to the south and east corner as well. But if you make a nice vegetated buffer there, yeah. you, you enhance it. That that might be as good as anything, as opposed to putting in some kind of structural berm or something. And we are doing a slight bit of regrading to actually raise that side is being raised uh, nearly a foot at the highest spot. Uh, at the very middle, mm -hmm. it, it comes up quite a bit, and that's again to give it that that back slope. Mm -hmm. Okay. But it, if you prefer it, I can add a berm. No problem. We could put a berm on there if that's what you prefer. I think it would be I'm more from other disturbance to do I that. Would, I'd like to see a berm myself. I would agree with that. I think you need some support back there. Just the, the volume of traffic and the weight, and the common sense delegates that it's going to force that slope out towards the marsh. Sure. If there's no barrier, it's just going to creep. It's going to break down. I have a question. To create said berm, would you have to disturb more existing native edge of marsh vegetation? Back no, it's outside the buffer or the resource area. Okay. It's a w it's one foot. A berm is an extra one. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Just making sure. Yep. How far would the berm be from the split rail fence? It's shown here. Uh. It looks like about a foot and a half. 
maybe a foot. That, that, that's right in the resource area. The salt marsh there. Mm -hmm. So I. If you could put material that salt marsh would grow on, I, otherwise, I, I don't think it's really something yeah. we want to promote. Disturbing that salt marsh in there. I don't know. You, know, you get a heavy rain, that water's going to come right down from 28 all the way down there. It's going to, a 1% slope is nothing. It's going to wash right off into the marsh. And anything that's on the driveway, whether it's contaminants, oil, whatever, from vehicles, it's going to whoosh, right in the house. If there isn't anything there to hold it, it's going to spread and thing. mash down. Well, you've got a slope going toward the, the swale, which is possible. Yeah, um, only on half of it. You've got a slope going right towards the ramp on the other half, on yeah. the west side. And yeah. you have pavers that are going to be pervious. So it, it's, a, it's a wide improvement. Um, it is, but the longevity has got to be a consideration, too. Yeah. I'm afraid that as time goes by, the whole thing is just going to mash right down and it's just going to continue to spread, and then you're just going to make the problem on the marsh that much worse. Yeah, I agree. So the berm on the east and west side, what is that? What, what's, how is it constructed? What, what um, so when the paving machine is there to do the rest of the pavement, they have a special setting on the side that forms. So it's a bituminous berm. Correct. And if you put a berm on the south end, it would be a foot? Yes, a berm is 12 foot wide, three, foot, three inches high, and it's into, pardon? A berm is 12 feet wide? 12 inches, I'm sorry. Okay. 12 inches wide, three, three inches high, and it's integral to the top course of the pavement. So Except down problem? there, there is no pavement. There's no pavement. It's the pavers. That's correct, which is another reason we didn't add the berm. Mm -hmm. I don't know if bituminous pavement right at the edge of salt marsh so is a good idea. We could add a curb, which is only six inches wide and would work well on the edge of the pavers. Would this one stand up to salt? <laughs> that, that, that sounds really difficult to permit to me, covering can it, salt marsh with pavement. Can it be something that, I mean, this is a little bit experimental in a way. Is it something that, I mean, we may not know until if if it's actually going to erode, they have things for the most part pitched so they're not, it's not going straight towards this area. The majority of the runoff is going to go diff in a different way. Is it something that we it see it, see it, how it, how it occur, how it happens and see what actually happens and then you could always amend the project and make adjustments um, for that. And, and I think you plant that corner to, to, be, to support the concept of retaining flow and support the concept that salt marsh is going to continue to grow there. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think we, well, are there further comments about this or any, any other part of this from commissioners? Can I just kind of recap for the them? So it sounds like what you're the majority of you are looking for. It looks like potentially reducing some of that pavement in the flat area, but not on the slopes. And I think that, and then changing the, pl the plant. Um, but seeing where we can reduce pavement in the flat, flattish area. If, if I could add to that, um, it, it looks to me like you've got about 12 feet from where the pavers and the pavement ends on the west side. I wonder if a 12-foot line coming across there would make the pavers continuous with the parking and bring that all the way across. It, would that be compatible with your slope? You know, it's a 12-foot. I'm sorry, can you say it again? Yeah, so see where the, the light is showing right there? Yep. You've got... Um, yep. I yeah, pavers, you know, right now the pavers stop before the parking on the west side. And so I wonder if you could just pave that whole parking on the west side there and, and just go bring it across. It's about 12 feet across. Is that something that would be compatible to what everything else you're trying to do? Yes, we could leave uh, just a small portion in front of the inlet paved sure. and bring the pavers as far, as close to that as possible. Okay, I think that's a nice um, adjustment. And then the second thing I had was maybe a, a slight change in the planting plan to maybe um, think about salt marsh growing in that southwest corner, southeast corner. Southeast corner. Yep. And then it, I, maybe you can do something that almost approaches a berm by building up material that salt marsh will grow on in that corner. I, I don't know, but 
I just don't favor putting down pavement on salt marsh like that. I, I think it would be inconsistent for us to support that. There is, there's not a lot of planting proposed in that southeast corner, but a few things could be switched out that are a little bit more salt tolerant. Compa um, yeah, the cedars may not, after a little while, like it there if it's in continually inundated. So those are small, but it's, it's a mix. There are a lot of plants there in that southeast corner, um, but a few, I think a few minor adjustments. Okay, so I don't think I'm hearing anything more from commissioners. Is there any public comment? Anyone in the room or online who has comments or questions? Do we, do we know if there's anyone online who might? Matt, do we know if there's anybody? Hello. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, we can. <laughs> Okay. Hi, everyone. I'm Simone Wright with the Cape Cod Conservation District, formerly with the Massachusetts Division of Marine Fisheries Shelter Sanitation Program. Um, I just uh, heard one of the questions about how treating this runoff will affect shellfish in the area and um, thought I'd weigh in on that. So the first flush of a storm has the majority, if not all, of the bacterial pollutant loading that goes into the water body. If there are marine fisheries shellfish closures in that area, it's um, it's due to bacteria, not likely due to anything else, because all of the state's uh, shellfish opening and closure regulations are based on bacterial counts. So reducing any input of bacteria into the water here would, um, in effect, help the bacterial water quality of the area and thus um, improve the shellfish habitat and improve the fishery for the shell fishermen because it would reduce the amount of time that area would spend closed. Um, I'd also just like to note that, uh, you know, with the, with the conservation district, I work very closely with National, National, Natural Resource Conservation Service from USDA. Um, we work on a lot of stormwater projects. I'm actually the stormwater and shellfish project manager for that group. Um, a lot of the time we choose to use impervious pavement over pervious pavers, um, not only because it's easier to maintain that bituminous concrete, but also because you can reliably transport water to where you want it to go. And overall, this helps the long-term uh, longevity of the project, uh, making sure that you get your water where it's supposed to be going. Um, we have been commenting on this on this project as we've gone through the design process and um, at the district we do support we do support this project. That's all I have to say. Okay, thank you. Do we have any further comments from anyone online or in the room? Hearing none. Um, how shall we proceed here? It sounds like we're asking for some further input here. Yep. So that's, I mean, if the commission wants to see the new, new plans that show um, less pavement and more pervious pavers, planting substitutions, things like that, then you can continue. Or if you feel um, that you're ready to vote, with those conditions on there, with a plan forthcoming, you can do that. I like to say no plan. Okay, John, I think we're better off continuing this hearing and seeing the new plan. I would too, I'd like to add one thing as well. The particular style of paper could make a difference in the overall results. I'd like to see what the choices for that are gonna be. Okay. okay, so our next meeting is April 18th. We would need any revisions by next Thursday. Oh, okay, then it would be May 1st. Um, and we would need revisions the week, the Wednesday prior. Okay, okay. I will make a motion that we continue the public hearing on the notice of intent with the town of Harwich, route 157, route 28, map 11, 
parcel S1-A to our meeting of May 1st, 2024. Second. Okay. Further comment? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Six and zero. If you want to run the the um, changes by me, you're welcome to do that. The, the Wednesday prior to May 1st, whatever that day is. Um, electronic and then 12 of um, any plan changes. Thanks. Okay, we all set? Yep. Okay, so the next item on the agenda is uh, 3 Hiawatha Road, Map 6, Parcel G1-1 for replacing a rock you can eat the chairs the chairs make a wonderful podium yeah well if I need it I'll uh, I'll have it available okay there, like that okay green cards yes please Going forward, you can always just scan them too. Okay. Thanks. Good evening. I'm Bob Perry, Cape Cod Engineering, working at Three Hiawatha. I was before you a month ago or so, and and uh, there had been some damage to uh, the steel seawall there. They were in progress, um, and <coughs> news travels fast, and storm damage occurred all along that coast uh, and the property adjacent to four and five that you reviewed earlier um, has a couple of cavernous holes in it and uh, the fellow uh, the family decided they would take the opportunity to join forces with their um, easterly neighbors so we were able to assemble a plan and a notice of intent to get this before you, which is effectively an in-kind replacement. There's no change in the position. Um, the access, it is expected that the three properties would do this together. So the access that you discussed with me for four and five would be the only practical best route for this job. And um, I think the only thing to say is it's likely this job would occur first. And I can't say when that would happen, but it looks a lot like it'll be next late fall. Not really practical to get in there before summer. Um, so it's a little bit slightly higher, but it's the same, same alignment, same type of construction. The revetment that's there now is very smooth and mortared. It's one of the old ones. Actually, I think it was first permitted in 1980. And uh, it's been repaired once or twice. So all that mortar would be taken out of there and it would be uh, more textured than the one that's there. So it would be consistent with the project that was approved before or to the, to the east, there's two. So we did submit a mitigation sketch, which uh, really just um, put back what we observed to be there uh, in the photos, it's five feet wide. Sure, it could get a little wider if you insist upon it. Um, the owner had explained to me that uh, they had beach grass up there, and they really liked it. It kept the traffic on the lawn from getting too close to the edge. So we uh, proposed something a little, just a little bit more diverse than that. We have the beach grass, but also um, taking. Amy's recommendation on some butterfly weed and goldenrod in that strip. Um, it would be pretty nice. There's um, Ragosa Rose on the east boundary, kind of off the site, but those roots, you know how they crawl at you. And then there's a pine grove, pretty thick pine grove that separates the property from Hiawatha. So there's some good woody vegetation on both sides of the place. Flagpole probably have to come out, but it will go back in. Uh, but otherwise, um, 
that's, that's what we've got. I think we could add some sand to the beach when the job goes forward. Um, actually, don't remember if we put in a volume. I think we did. I'll try to tell you that. I can. Uh, 100 cubic yards at the time of construction. And I know they do have an ongoing program for nourishment there that they have uh, engaged occasionally with the town. So that's the summary of it. Okay, thank you. Amy? Yeah, one second. Get a note. Um, so this, there already is an existing revetment there, as Mr. Perry said. It's falling apart. Fall, um, there's holes in it where rocks have started to fall through. There's woody vegetation starting to go through it, which is not helping its integrity as well. Um, so this is replacement essentially in kind of what, um, what's there now, just slightly higher to meet the elevations um, of the other ones. You just permitted the replacement of two failing um, bulkheads to the east. There is rock also to the west of this, so there's not going to be, there's not any open gaps where you have to worry about really damage to other properties as a result of this. If anything, it will absorb slightly better than it does right now. Um, in terms of, so there is kind of a vegetated strip on the top now, so I don't know if I would call it mitigation, but you're, but rather than just kind of putting back what will be disturbed in, in doing this work. But because it's a replacement and really no change in, in square footage, I don't see mitigation as necessary. I just see it as a replacement of the strip and that you put, um, put the condition of no fertilizers and chemicals on that property. Um, a, the bigger discussion then tonight is to talk about nour nourishment requirements. I think here it's a replacement of an existing, they're offering to do 100 cubic yards at the time of construction and they sometimes take advantage of the town um, nourishment program that we have, um, but a separate conversation that I think the commission should have at another meeting is, is requirement of beach nourishment, particularly for new coastal engineering structures um, a lot of towns, and I started the pilot that program in East Ham back in the day of requiring a set amount of nourishment depending on what the erosion rate is for properties because you have a shoreline of hard structures which have for decades stopped sand nourishment naturally onto the beach. And if you don't get sand nourishment onto the beach, your beach elevation drops, your, severe, your high tides get even higher and your low tides aren't as low anymore and your storm damage comes higher up. Um, so part of the reason in my mind that this area has seen such damage um, is because it's historically been, um, had hard structures for many decades now. And yes, some people are nourishing, but not to the extent that the natural system needs it. So a bigger discussion to be had than tonight, but I think an important one we should have. I, you know, I can appreciate that. I, if I might just add a little, the south side of Cape Cod is a fascinating study mm -hmm. of haves and have nots with respect to sediment. The, the land to the west of Allen's Harbor is four or five acres of dune buildup as a result of the jetty. Mm -hmm. And it's just consistent all the way down. So that this side, the lee side or downdrift side yep. of these jetties are severely disadvantaged. Mm -hmm. Maybe someday there'll be a bypass program if somebody gets angry enough to file the wrong lawsuit. But there's been a public-private partnership in Harwich which has worked quite well to kind of work with the dredging programs in the harbor. Mm -hmm. So that's a good source for this yep. material, and in 1994, this beach got a heavy dose uh, in a public dredging project with uh, the Department of Ar Environmental Management. Mm -hmm. And now most of that is gone, but it lasted from 95 to about December 23, <laughs> which is pretty good. 
Oh, maybe that can happen again, but they're willing to put some sand in, and everybody that I've met there is, is, in, is uh, interested in, in doing it. So mm -hmm. that's a good thing. Okay, thank you. You're all set. Mm -hmm. I'm all set. Sophia. Just one thing on the plant list, and it's so unfortunate because Goldenrod's such a perfect plant for the space. It's going to do great. It's so good for the pollinators. It does tend to get kind of tall. So depending on how picky the clients are about their view, if it gets four and a half, five feet tall, that might be a problem. And I don't know. It's one of those risky things where, you know, somebody might say it's all turned into weeds and we just had to cut it down. So I haven't seen beach goldenrod get that tall. Okay. Goldenrod will if you get it in a field and you stand up. But I've never seen it um, get above the beach grass in any significant way. Okay. But it's, you know, it's something to look at. Um, if they didn't like it, they either come see you, maybe maybe it responds to pruning, I don't know. You could but certainly they shouldn't that. be pruning. <laughs> right. Well, they would, like I said, they come see you. I said that first, they come see yeah. you, they prune. Yeah. But I, I don't think that will be a problem. And, okay. and they'll, they'll station that, I'll warn them, but I, I I've never seen beach goldenrod in the breeze, it kind of tends to lay down. Okay, you know how breezy really it can be out there. I've seen it grow pretty tall, okay. but in that okay. scenario, not in sand, so you, I don't have experience. You, you brought up it. something that I'm I'm interested in, yeah. so thank um, you. I'll other be than watching. That, it looks it looks great to me. Okay. I don't have any problem with it. I think it's a good plan. It's got to be done. Pretty simple project. <coughs> I I agree. I just want to take the time just to thank you for the background information and Amy too. Very good commentary on this. So I learned a lot just now. Um, on those lines, um, this type of stone revetment, about a 40-year history. Um, For life, lifespan? Yeah. yeah. Should be better. It really should. Uh, what you'll note, um, we, we have a minus four toe here. Uh, we doubt very much this beach will drop that much, but a lot of these revetments, with regard to their longevity, it's an underestimation of what they are asked to deal with. Mm -hmm. So we've watched a lot of failures because They've been built by folks that just did not realize that every single rock actually counts. It's, it's like dry masonry. And so there are revetments on Cape Cod that have gone much longer, probably by luck and, and good skills. Um, I would like to think that we get longer than 40, right. really. But here we have one in 1980, but it, it didn't have the kind of fabric that we have today. Right. And it had, uh, and it probably had other disadvantages that we're not even sure of. And you wouldn't call it a failure, right? It's, it's well, it, I've close. told many people you have a crumbling rock revetment that's still working as a riprap. Yeah. Yeah. But it's dangerous. Kids can crawl into holes. There's a hole in Hiawatha uh, that somebody should maybe think about filling. Yeah, I saw. And then um, they can become an attractive nuisance when they get sure. weak and unstable. And, um, but so you, you like to see a four foot depth of toe? Well, no, it'll be more than that. More than that. It, it'll be probably seven to eight, oh. but the beach could drop. We have, a, we have an elevation four yeah. beach, yeah. and we're gonna go to minus four. Okay. We lose, just this year, this year alone, we lost three feet in beach elevation. Wow. In some areas of town. So you have, and then you gain a little, when you do nourishment or the summer months, you gain a little, but you're, you're losing. Um, so but you want to go down deep. Yeah, you place that nourishment on your on your stone on face, face. Let yeah. it go into the beach naturally. Yeah. But it's a safeguard against collapse or undermining. A, a vertical wall would go much much deeper. Yeah. That was my next question. Since you're giving us a lesson here, huh. compare the, the the neighboring bulkheads in terms of performance. Um, what what do you favor for this? Well, place? it's a r matter of our criteria for proposing coastal structures relates to convention regulatory feedback, like a vertical wall wave reflection, just directly blows the beach back offshore. Mm -hmm. A revetment gives you some turbulence, eats up the wave energy, it runs back more slowly, and you don't get as much beach scour. Right. So the depth of embedment for a s vertical seawall is often related to partly mm -hmm. against the kicking out, falling over, or hydraulic action underneath it. So you could have, a, a, if you were really preparing a, a seawall in a harbor, you know, you can have a 14 to 16 foot embedment. And it's, it doesn't op, occupy as much real estate. Right. 
as a revetment, but a revetment is thought of as better for the conditions in the net, in the immediate environment. Right. So it takes up real estate, but yeah. it sounds like for this coast, new construction should be a revetment. Um, you can replace in kind the bulkheads because if you have the room that footprint's there. If you go east of this place, I think you're more or less pinched to do bulkhead replacements. Yeah, the tide comes. Atlantic Avenue, there's no room. Yeah, the tide's yeah. right up. Yeah. Well, thank you. Sure. <laughs> no further questions. Uh, I just have a question for information again. We were talking about 100 yards of sand here. And how does that compare with, you made the comment, I think, that in the 90s, was it, there was a large dredge deposit? How big, how much sand would have gone on here at that in this lot, in this? Well, uh, there was a dune. If you look at the um, photographs from just several years ago, um, yeah. when that 1990 dose came in, it was, you know, I wish I could remember, but it was on the order of, you know, it was 20,000 cubic yards, possibly, over from Allen Harbor all the way down almost to Atlantic Ave. And then I um, actually got involved. I hired a bulldozer uh, operator to move that material. It was part of the project. Move that material up onto the beach, and then we put up permitted uh, drift fences, mm -hmm. lath-type snow fence, uh -huh. and planted beach grass. Tim Fryer, he planted the beach grass. And I got called on the carpet by the Windermere Bluffs Association because they didn't like the beach grass. Mm -hmm. They did not want beach grass taking up their beach. So that was one of those, what are you doing to us? And the best thing they did was do that because that mm -hmm. dune building activity with the fence and the, and the beach grass is the only reason I think that stuff stuck around until just a year ago. Yeah. And so 100 cubic yards is about three times what this property would probably donate if it was eroding naturally yeah. per year. In some of the places we work more often is the higher bluffs on Cape Cod Bay, say 30 feet high, 100 foot lot, We've got surveys from 50 years ago, surveys now. It's about 100 cubic yards per year per lot. So these are lower banks, less erosion. It's probably 25 to 30 percent of an annual. Um, it's it's four, three or four times what an annual dose would be. I see. So okay. it's something. Mm -hmm. I think the town's going to be putting over the. I mean, there's thousands of yards they yeah, we, selling. Yeah, we do. Well, we do what we, on our town beaches first, John, make sure the town beaches get what we oh, need yeah. and then yep. sell it pretty much at cost, um, any excess that we have. Well, it's, uh, they're, they're starting to hurt a little bit yeah. on this side and Sacramento Bluffs and you've heard hurting it, for I'm a sure. while. <laughs> You're up to your, you know, eyeballs and yeah. questions and complaints probably. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, try okay. to get the end of Thank that. you. Um, any other questions or comments? Any anyone from the public doesn't look like there's anyone online anymore. Anyone in the room have comments or questions? <coughs> Hearing none. Hearing none, I'll make a motion that we approve the notice of intent for three Hiawasa Road map six parcel G one dash one with the condition that no fertilizers or chemicals be used on the property. Second. Maybe, I can call you. Uh, any further comments? Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Well, thank you very much. It's always good to see you. Thank you. Fun stuff to talk about. Unless you have to buy one. That's true. Mm -hmm. Next, we have a request for a determination of applicability for 84 Queen Anne Road, map 57, partial A4-1 and A4-2 to install a pool and replace an existing patio.
would just announce who you are and then describe a little bit of your project. Hello, everybody. My name is Mackenzie Yarlitz. I'm my Greg. Husband, my husband, Gregory Yarlitz. Uh, we live at 84 Queen Anne Road, and we're looking to put in a small pool in our backyard, which is currently grass. And we worked with Amy to come up with a plan that would meet conservation requirements because it is within the, a little over the 200 foot, foot border. Excuse me. Yeah, so just, I just wanted to you know, make sure it was clear that everything that's happening for this pool project, we're not disturbing any um, native vegetation. It's all within the, the backyard, we'll call it right now. It's all turf grass or mulch bed or an existing patio that's being um, removed. So, yeah. Okay, thank you. Amy? So, um, some of the project is not within your jurisdiction. This is right kind of straddling that 200 foot riverfront area from kind of the very upper reaches of the Herring River before it goes um, under Route 6. And um, so what I directed them to do was to take the general, the square footage of what their um, additional hardscape is and then propose two to one mitigation planting for that. They have a pretty de well defined edge of yard space um, with kind of a berm and some plantings. And um, the goal, the aim is to kind of just enhance that buffer a little bit more um, with some natives that they've um, described for you in their, in their application. So as they stated, this is either in lawn area or on kind of an existing patio. It's very flat. It's not going to disturb any native vegetation. Um, so I think this is, um, that's why I had them do an RDA, because they're pretty much at the perimeter of your jurisdiction for doing this. Um, let's see. The patio would be installed under, over a compacted, compacted T base on sand. I'm not a big, um, I don't really understand, like, that's not my, expertise is how absorbent that would be. Um, are you familiar? Um, well, right now our plan is to pour a concrete um, patio. That's okay. the plan. And we're willing to do a, a French drain on that east side of the patios yep. that's beyond the berm to yep. absorb any runoff and have it go into dry well. Um, so obviously the, the base underneath it. I think that description there was for, we we're thinking about doing travertine, but okay. now the plan is to do concrete. Okay, so we would just, um, I, I don't have an issue with that as long as you do direct your runoff towards a perimeter drain um, that tr goes into a drywall. Yeah. Okay, that doesn't change their square footages or anything. Um, let's see. Um, I would recommend a negative two determination, um, which is proving the project. Um, we do require, it's typical for everybody that within our jurisdictional area, we require no fertilizers or chemical application. Um, so part of your property is within that and that would be consistent with what we require for everybody else. Um, especially even though you're almost 200 feet from the Herring River, um, it is an impaired water body. So trying to have everybody do their part. So. Okay, thank you. Mark? <clears throat> no remarks. Jim? No comment. Larry? Agree with Amy's assessment? No comment. Pretty yeah. simple. Sophia? <coughs> I have nothing. So, doesn't look like there's anyone else who cares to comment. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, we could entertain a motion. Okay, I'll move that we um, approve the determination of applicability for 84 Queen Anne Road, map 57, parcel A4-1 and A4-2 um, with a negative two determination and with the conditions that no fertilizers or chemicals be used on property within the jurisdiction of this commission and that any pool water that is to be removed 
be trucked off site. Second. Further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Get some zero. Thank you. We'll have the permit out to you in a couple days. Okay. Thank Thanks you so much. Please. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Next, we have a request for an extension permit for the town of Harwich along Nantucket Sound, Herring River, Round Cove, Allen Harbor, Witchmere Harbor, and Sacquatucket Harbor, SE 32-2292 for townwide dredging and beach nourishment. You want to speak to it or you want me to? <laughs> I said, do you want to speak to it or you want me to? Makes no difference. He was looking at me, so I okay. that was my <laughs> so That's why you were here. <laughs> I am. <laughs> Hi, uh, John Rendon, Harbor Master. So, yeah, I, as my memo of February 21st states, I'm requesting an extension of the order conditions. We have been, uh, over the last five and a half years or so, we've been attempting to get our comprehensive 10-year dredge permit approved through the Army Corps, which we recently did in June. Uh, so we have the current Corps permit approved. We have we applied for a combined 401 water quality, Chapter 91. They've changed their rules, so now you have to do it separately. So we have our 401 water quality cert recently given, and uh, we're waiting for our Chapter 91, which uh, they're waiting kind of for, for this to, to to give me the final approval, but uh, nothing has changed. We're still dredging the same channels that uh, uh, our previous uh, five-year general permit included, um, and we're still dredge are nourishing the same sites. Uh, nothing's changed uh, on the new plan. So, um, if there's any questions, I'd be happy to ask to answer. Amy, um, John's been. Um very easy to work with in terms of notifying us when the dredge comes. We don't really have a <laughs> say in when the county dredge comes to Harwich. Um, it's typically in June of each year, which makes my job as a plover person <laughs> essentially a little bit harder. Um, but John's um, coworkers have, a sen have helped step up when need be as well to do some monitoring when we're putting sand on, near on beaches that are near plover habitat. Um, so we received the post dredge surveys from the Harbor Master as per the order of conditions. Those are in your drop box. Each year they work with us to notify us when the dredging is going to occur, when, there, when and where there will be nourishment. Um, this is a great program for the town. It, just to give you an example, I think this year the dredge, it's $12 a cubic yard, I believe, was the county quote, John, um, for the, it's what the town pays for cubic yards dredged. Just that or just a little bit over is what we, what people, the private citizens can bid on um, to get sand on their properties. So it's taking good, clean channel sand because it has to meet a certain quality of, has to be less than 10% fines and, you know, re limited contaminants and puts that, ba that sand back on, on our, our shorefront. Conversely, if people wanted to bring in sand from another source, it's roughly $45 a cubic yard to do so, transport in place. So it's a great program for the town. The town's not really making much money off of it or any. Um, and it's assisting people manage their shorefronts with material that is, is good material. Um, you kept your dredge amounts to within your plus or minus one. Um, and just going forward, um, something I'd like to work with you about is to make sure I get a list of the private properties that take advantage of the dredge sand. Just so, you know, when certain people like Hiawatha come in front of us, I can just know in the future who's getting, who's getting sand. Um, but other than that, no, I, I think it's um, a, something mm. unique kind of to Harwich and I would recommend a three-year extension. Okay, great. Thank you. Sophia, anything? No questions. Mm. No, nothing. Brad. Yeah, a couple questions, and it's more on the 
whole process of extensions. Um, when, when did the NOI come in and how many extensions have been given? This permit was issued in 2017, so it was issued one extension thus far. Yeah. Okay. And um, so it's, I, I think we should extend this. I, you know, I think it's clear, but I also, I think I like to talk about the extension practices. Most towns have um, limits, and so I don't know if folks want to discuss that now or another time. I think two extensions is appropriate. Um, so I, I, I don't have a problem with that. I didn't see the, the sur post dredge surveys in the Dropbox. I, I just saw a, um, a DP notice. Did, did anyone else see them? No, I don't. I will look. I, 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 didn't did requ I requested that staff put them in there. Yeah. Um, I, I think it's good for the commission to periodically I will take a look at them. Definitely make. Yep. Do streams. John gave them to me, so it's. My issue that they weren't not, if they were not in your Dropbox. Yeah. I just think it's you know periodically mm -hmm. maybe a, on a third extension request to have the commission review the, the survey plans and just talk about you know look at reports yep. and see how it's gone. But otherwise, I have no concerns with this request. Okay, thank you. Jim. No concerns. No remarks. Nothing. Anyone else in the room? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll move that we approve the request for an extension of the permit for the town of Harwich along Nantucket Sound, Herring River, Round Poo, Allen Harbor, Wedgemere Harbor, and Sacquatucket Harbor, SE 32-2292 for a period of three years. Second. Further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Six and zero. Thank Thanks. you. Appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks, John. Um, okay, so next on the agenda are a collection of five orders of conditions. Mm -hmm. Um, shall we just go through them one by one? Sure. I think I had one minor comment. Yeah, I, I got yours I that was people cannot be present. How can you be both present and absent? Those are <laughs> minutes. These are orders oh. of conditions. Uh, you sent me something. Dry well versus... Oh, right. I, I had a spelling error. Yeah, yeah. It says nothing. So, but... Um, and that was for a different, not for this one. So the first one here is uh, an order of conditions for the town of Harwich, Route 28 road layout between Bank Street and Sacquatucket Harbor, SE 32-2552 for sidewalk construction by MassDOT on the south side of Route 28. Do we have any questions or comments? Do we need more time to review? Okay. Okay, hearing no request for more time, I will uh, make a motion that we close the public hearing and authorize the issuance of order of conditions for the town of Harwich Route 28 road layout between Bank Street and Sacquatucket Harbor, SE 32-2552. I'll second. Further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Next is an order of conditions for 435 Route 28, Map 13, Parcel S1-B2, SE32-2554, for the relocation of an unpermitted structure. Once again, comments? Concerns, request for more time. Not for me. Okay, hearing none, I will make a motion that we close the public hearing and authorize the issuance of order of conditions 
for 435 Route 28, Map 13, Parcel S1-B2SE32-2554. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Abstain. 501. Next, we have an order of conditions for 11 Atlantic Street, map 6B, parcel L144, SE32 2556, to raise and replace a single family dwelling. Again, any comments or concerns? Any requests for more time? Okay. okay, hearing none, I will make a motion that we close the public hearing and authorize the issuance of orders of conditions for 11 Atlantic Street, map 6B, parcel L144, SE32-2556. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Six and zero. <clears throat> Next is an order of conditions for 29 Walther Road, map 16, parcel T7, SE32-2557, to raise and replace a single family dwelling with spa, fire pit, patio, and coastal access stairs. Again, comments? Questions, concerns? Need for more time. Okay, hearing none, I'll make a motion that we close the public hearing and authorize the issuance of an order of conditions for 29 Walther Road, map 16, parcel T7, SE32-255. Seven. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Abstain. Five zero one. So next we have orders of conditions for six zero two Queen Anne Road, map eighty three, parcel S two S E thirty two dash two four eight seven for trash. Removal and planting, additional mitigation, landscaping, and patio. No comments. Okay, if nobody has any comments and there is no request for additional time, I will make a motion that we close the public hearing and authorize the issuance of an order of conditions for 602 Queen Anne Road, map 83, parcel S2, SE32-2487. Second. Further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Six and zero. Okay, finally we have Two sets of minutes, um, not finally, but next we have two sets of minutes. First is for February 1, 2023. This is the last of the backlog. Wow. <laughs> That's it. That's Congratulations. Like champagne or something. I think. Is that the one that I said I'd review? Mm, no, you actually, I don't know what happened with that one. I think that was supposed to be, that was February, the first meeting in February of this year. So technically that's a backlog too, but it's already done, so it needs just a review. Let, let me if you do the, it's not this one. Okay, all right. Well, but I'll the do. first meeting in February okay. of this year, please. I reviewed them and I have not a single comment. I said some, something to Amy, I think about this one, but yep. other, it's a minor thing. 
anything further from anyone else. Okay. There's nothing else. I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes of February 1st to, of our meeting of February 1st, 2023. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Six and zero. Okay, next is minutes for uh, our last meeting, March 20th, 2024. This was the one where Wayne and Sophia were both present and absent. That, that's a good trick. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Uh, you were both uh, present and uh, absent. Uh, present <laughs> and absent. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll have Leisha check that. You were both here last meeting, though, right? Uh, no, I wasn't. They, Not neither the last one. Both of you. Neither of them were here. Oh, so you were actually absent. Yeah, as it says here. But you were also present, according to this. <laughs> but it also oh, I says, see up on top there, yes. <laughs> it also says you seconded one of the motions. Uh oh. So, uh, that, so whatever. They just need to be fixed. Yep, that's fine. Colson, Coleman. Sounds the same, almost. Ooh, excuse me. Okay, so anything else from anybody for March 20th, 2024? No? Yeah. Okay. Okay, I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes uh, of our meeting of March 20th, 2024, uh, revised as discussed at our meeting tonight. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Six and zero. Okay. So now we have two items under discussion and possible vote. The first being discussion of one salt meadow driveway. Start this off. Yeah, so I thought the contractor was going to be here, but I guess not. But I don't, a couple of you have visited the site, so I want to get your input. Maybe he doesn't need to come to the next meeting. Um, he's just looking for a path to move forward for this. So this driveway goes out 500 to 1,000 feet um, over the salt marsh, and an old berm over the salt marsh, over a finger of the river out to an island pretty much in the river. It's a cool property. You saw it a year or two ago in a project. The application was withdrawn for some shoreline protection. But this driveway is extremely low in elevation. Um, it was clearly, you know, bermed and to create the driveway, um, so it seemed. And it overtops with high tides on the regular now. The contractor approached me because he wanted to add a few inches of hardening to raise it up. It's clearly hardening has been used in the past there, but it's over salt marsh. Everything has been depressed. I would say, what, well, maybe the road is probably, what, two feet higher than the actual salt marsh, roughly, at most places. So high tides, it, it overtops. Um, I expressed that I would not want to see any more hardening used. Um, or bluestone dust or anything, anything, any kind of aggregate like that to raise it up any longer because um, he wanted to go quite a bit higher than just like a top dressing. He wanted to put up to six inches on it. And if you did that, then it would be, he wanted you know it to be pitched so that the water would run off into the salt marsh because right now it ponds in the road. It's completely flat. Um, I had said, and he wasn't asking necessarily for me to do it administratively, but I'm, I feel like at this point, because it's such a long stretch, pretty much in the salt marsh, that it's not, that it is something that we need a full, full notice of intent application for with engineering, with somebody addressing performance standards, um, understanding that they need to access the home, I guess they're going to be applying for us in a year or so in order to raise their bridge 
a foot or two because um, that also gets an extreme storm events. There's water over it as well. And they, they, there's no access. Um, I think they're just trying to get a feel for what they can do. In the meantime, my inclination was the only thing I would feel comfortable allowing him to do at this point would be li a top dress it, essentially fill in the holes with a native three quarter inch to an inch stone. Um, but again, just a, just a top dressing of it and, and that would be it. No, no hardening, no anything that could leach or really erode into the salt marsh. A um, couple of you have been out there interested to hear your comments. We can have them come in or we just give them direction. Which He just wants direction, which way to go. Where is Salt Meadow Drive, Amy? So if you go, if you're on 28 and you drive behind the old pot of geranium near the river. Oh, and down in West Howard, it's going over the In West okay. Howard, you don't, don't know, go over yeah. the river. Go yeah. behind yeah. there yeah, and there's a driveway is. out to yeah. one of the islands. Hubbard's Island used to be, yes, Don Husband had a place up there. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Mark. Space there is very limited. Anything that you do on the roadway is not going to stay put. Um, I think for the time being, Amy's on the right track. Maybe fill the holes with three quarter inch and a half stone just to take the bumps out of it for the season. But going forward, it's going to going to have to be a much more involved project. Um, if they're going to go through the effort to change that bridge, the approach to the bridge on either side is going to change, and that's going to impact the road surface. So. Yeah, they were talking about putting like riprap on the side on the sides, and I'm like, that's in the salt marsh at I that would point. You know, not not under this, not for this. You just but going forward and right. But I mean, for the time being, like I said, just holding the holes in, like you suggested, I think is as far as it could go. Because I, as much as I hate to say it, I think the whole thing needs to go before an engineer to uh, have an inclusive plan. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, I said I'd agree with what Mark said. I would like to see an inclusive plan before I'd be able to do any real evaluation. Nothing further. Yeah, I agree with that. It, especially if, you know, the wording of a few. That always makes me a little... <laughs> what's a few mean? Well, then we, <laughs> met, we met on the site and I heard six, <laughs> which is, to me, more than a few. Yeah, I'm sure, but I, I agree with yeah. the stone. Fill in the holes, make it usable for now. I agree with that as well, and I don't think they should try to do anything else like separate from considering the bridge. That doesn't make any sense, because I, I mean, yeah. I'm obviously am not an engineer, but it's like, I don't think it would be an option to lock any of the water, so like bringing the road high enough up so that they're not driving through a lot of water, but not blocking the water flowing to the other side, of, like that seems like a real problem. Like like you kind of joked when we were out there, it, it's like it all should be a little bit of a bridge. Yeah. You know, to like let flow through and not be a structure. A dam. It's just. It's too narrow right now to, to be able to control it. So. Yeah. Yeah. So. We can't, like if they were to come forward with an application just for the road, we can't prohibit them. But I mean, I can definitely say we advise that you tackle the two together. If you've already engaged supposedly with an engineer to look at the bridge, let's look at the whole thing. So what do you mean we can't? I, I mean, I, what I don't, what I don't know at all is, and maybe you can clarify this for me, is how, how the law, you know, the Wetlands Protection Act applies. I mean, when someone wants to construct a riprap on the water where there isn't one, they, you know, there are very strict constraints no. on who can do that. And in this case, 
there's a pre-existing structure, but long term, you know, if there's another foot of sea level rise here, yeah. then that road is a problem. And, you know, I can't, having looked at the site, I don't see how you make that thing passable without disturbing the salt marsh. And how does the, you know, how does the Wetlands Protection Act apply to that? Is that a pre-70 whatever, 74 house? And is there some, you're shaking your head no. There is no provision well, that would Well, that house, I believe, would, I, don't quote me, that I believe that house was built in the 80s. No, that house been there a long time. That existing uh, house that's the, there? In oh, the, that's in right. The there's a new one out there, isn't there? In the current yeah, configuration. You're right. you're right. I'm thinking Rocks of the old Rocks are one. supposed to protect a dwelling, though, not to protect the road or driveway to a dwelling. But if you're doing new structure, because I don't see how long term yeah. they can manage that without doing new structure, and how are they constrained by, you know, state law or, or our local so bylaws in what they can do there? They're going to have to do a pretty in-depth alternatives analysis. They're going to have to do probably the least invasive thing that would allow at, you know, continued safe er, a access to the to the structure. What that's going to look like, I don't know, but they'll need to do a full alternatives analysis, which is including a do nothing all the way up to, I, I hate to say it, a bridge um, that spans it, which would which would be massive, um, and potentially, would it be better or worse? I don't know. But uh, that would it'll probably be one honestly that I'll need some help, like third party review, to look at as well. Do you know offhand? what like top of foundation is for the structures that are out there? No, I can look. I have, I think I have some old plans. The structures, they're, they're several feet higher than, than the road. Um, if you look, if you stand at 47 North Road and look yeah. across, that's this place. Um, so I don't know, probably 10 feet. So it's not threatened any time in there. The houses are not, not by floodwaters. I mean, I mean, anything's possible, but they might still be under flood elevation because flood elevation is like, I think it's 12 there. So it's may, may be right around that, but I see. they're not anywhere near as low as the road. All right, well, I. All right, well, I have some direction. That's really all I needed. Um, so I'll get back to the contractor, and if he wants to talk with you further, we can invite him to another meeting, but hopefully I can give him. This is what they, they've been out to the site. This is what they've said. That what they would suggest. Okay. Well, so the last item here is does NEC land management? Mm-hmm have everything that you have given to me. It's not completely all put together. Um, hope it will be. We've had a little, we had said some, had some setbacks um, in the past two weeks in our department. Right. Do we want to have a general discussion here now about, or do we want to wait until we have a final assembly? I don't mind, I, for me, I, I saw your comments. Mm -hmm. I'm fine with everything. I, I had a bunch of minor editorial comments, but I had four discussion points. I wonder if we knock off one or two of the discussion points tonight. Yeah, well, sure. And I, I, I can tell you pretty quickly what they are. The easiest one is on um, a reference on page 12, the glycophate. And I, I just wondered if that was an artifact to the 2012 report. Um, it is. Yeah, glycophate's allowed. It's, it's, it's a tool in the toolbox. Do we want as a commission to be um, pointed out as the language does that you know this is something we can use? Um, I would say with applicate like maybe make an allusion to chemical application, but not specify because in a few years that could that chemical could be obsolete too. It's being challenged in you know? European countries and you know yeah. California doesn't like it. And, and so there's other there's others, but yeah. I think we allude to chemical treatment on a case-by-case -case basis. Yeah, let future departments and commissions decide. 
but that's that was my thought. I, I, don't, you know, I don't know if they folks feel otherwise. I agree. It seemed like it was older language. It is. Um, yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. The second, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you all three, you guys could decide if you have the stomach to talk about any of these or if you want to get out of here. That was the easy one. The next, one, next one's a little more detailed. Um, in the, the first report, 2012, in the updates, um, there's been discussion on having, uh, revamping the West Reservoir Fishway parking lot to make it ADH, ADA compatible. And I think that's a great goal. My thought was to, to wait when the site was redone, when the, you know, the berm was redone, the fishway, um, when that whole site gets reconstructed to tackle that type of a disruption. Um, right now, the way it reads, it, it, kind of, it carried on from 2012, let's do this now. And so I, I don't think, as a commission, we've discussed it. Um, I certainly support it. I, I think it might be too disruptive to try to fit that in without reconstructing everything. So that was that was a, that's a larger item. The third item, I went ahead and I reordered. Amy wrote down the goals that we had, and, and many of these carried over from the last report. I reordered them based on a sense of priority, and so I think I'd like to see some feedback on that. Whether people agree with doing that, or do they agree with the, the order I have them in, or just have no order at all? And the, the final discussion point was on we had a flow management plan that was in the earlier drafts. It kind of gives future guidance on how to manage the, the property, the bogs, and, and do we want to include that. So th those were four discussion points. Everything else to me is just clean. I, I think it's been through, it's been gone through quite a bit. So I don't know if folks have any interest in tackling one of the three remaining talking points, or if you'd rather read the comments in the draft. Well, let's just start with the glyphosate thing. Do, do, does everybody agree that that should be removed as a specific reference and a more general reference should be put in there to uh, potentially using um, herbis chemical herbicides when other measures are inadequate? That would make yeah. sense to me. Yeah. Obviously, it's going to be a very limited case. Frag, that's about it. <laughs> yeah. And is glyphosate the right thing for frag measures? I don't. It's what's been used um, traditionally. I mean, we don't typically, this commission has not allowed, and I wouldn't recommend a lot of foliar application right. of um, anything. And so typically, when the commission has allowed it, glyphosate, it's on a plant that is like a reed, like Phragmites or knotweed, where you use a cut and white method um, to get it more directly on. Um, but it's very, spe it's very species specific and time of year specific to do it. It's very effective for yeah. cut and use, so I would say that. Yeah. But that's, I mean, that's really what we have out there right now. That's the best right product right now for Phragmites. But it may not be in five years. Yeah, well, that's sort of another thing that I object to about the glyphosate thing is that it says glyphosate solutions such as Roundup, but Roundup, A, there's multiple formulations yeah. of Roundup and they have other stuff, some of which is actually a lot more object objectionable than the glyphosate itself at least it seems that way to me. But so I think we all agree. Okay, we'll that's that. fine. Then the next, let's just try to talk about a few of these things tonight and get them. Okay. Off. Well, I, we'll, we'll yeah, sure. The next one I think is pretty important. You know, yeah. how does everyone want to see that re West Reservoir Fishway <coughs> parking lot look? And I think Amy has some good thoughts on just you know working with the federal partners to just redo everything. So I like that concept, but I to try to fit in, you know, eighty. A compliance without doing that. I don't yep. know how you do that. My personal take, for whatever it's worth, is that we wait a year or two to see how that starts to play out. We should know this summer if we're going to get funding to look at that system holistically from the dam all the way up the river, which would include, so it's going to include the dam, and we can certainly include alternate like access. Um, 
so uh, similar to what we don't want happening at Herring River, I would ha hate to, because it's going to cost money to do as well, um, hate to do some, make a change and then a few years later potentially go in and dig the whole thing up. Right. Um, so I think there's, there's, it's not ADA access that's there now, but it's, it's good access. Even if you have some slight mobility issues, it's it's not extremely cumbersome. Right. But ultimately, I think the goal of making that completely ADA access is a good one. And, and that's what I wrote in my last edits. Mm -hmm. I, I kind of shifted that goal around a little bit and said, let's integrate all those improvements with the plan to redo the berm, the dam, the fishway. Do it all at once and, and make it spectacular. I, I think it's hard to fit it in with the footprint that's there. And you know, you've been around that footprint for a long time, so you know you know what I'm talking about. It's tight. Mm -hmm. um, so that that was my preference, but I don't think we've talked a lot about that. Um, we're not required to make those changes unless we receive, I think, large amounts of state or federal funding and redo it, right? So we're, right now we're not required to do that. We're not required. If you make um, major improvements to the area, you're gonna be required to or at least come to given the space requirements come as close as possible as you possibly can to meeting but yeah so can that just be included in the document as a longer term goal as opposed yeah. to yeah yep um, well, subject to plan. planning for other yep. potentially substantial changes to the site well, I, I think everyone should take a look at the edits I put in and uh, when they get a chance, when Amy has a chance to go through them. And, I, and that's, I tried to recognize that. I said, you know, here's a goal from 2012. It was stated then. And then here's what's going on now. It refers early in the document to this present plan with the feds, trying mm -hmm. to redo the whole thing. And then it says let's integrate these changes with that process. Mm -hmm. and, and so take a look at the language and, and see what you think. Um, I'll resend it around. I don't think it was in Dropbox, so I'll resend yeah, it. I'll resend it. I didn't see it. I, I saw John's. I'll resend it around. Um, I, I highlight three discussion points. We've already covered one. That's number two, and then I've added a fourth one tonight, and that's the water management plan, which I, you know, we, we did work on a few years ago, and it um, it was in earlier drafts. I favor bringing it back, so maybe I'll find that language and. You know, get that out there. But for me, they were just those were the, the discussion points. Okay. Um, I'm not. I don't have my document in front of me, so I wouldn't be prepared to talk about order of priorities okay. tonight. I we're put, looking I put fairly that, light. Yep. I put um, that one first. I I thought redoing that site is just a you know, that's a big project for the town of Harwich, and with the chance to you know rebuild the fishway account for sea level rise, the, those bulkheads at some point are going to need to be repaired, and maybe redo the whole site with a different vision and, and maybe get some access going from the reservoir to the tidal area, mm. maybe some kayak access, something like that. So I put that as first. Mm -hmm. So we have a, other comments. I know, Mark, you sent <coughs> Priority in that whole region for me would be the road system. And I think the, the quality of that road that comes down through there, the silting that's going on in yeah, the pond, that. as well as the silting that goes on in the marshes, to me that's a big that's a big issue. And I think that needs to be really high on the priority list. And it's going to take a long time to get that off the ground. There's a significant amount of engineering done, and it's going to cover a significant expense. So, I mean, for my money, that would be one to step up. So Amy incorporated... I put that in. We just didn't. We didn't. We haven't come up with like the list of what are our top priorities. That's high on my list, too. Yeah. Amy did put a bullet for that. And that. Yeah, and I did. Yeah, and I, you know, I just restructured things, but the same, you know, one I felt was left over in 2012, uh, land purchase one, and um, there was one, number six or something. You'll take a look when you see my yeah. comments. But yeah, I think that's a good topic to have us have it in front of us and, and dis discuss. What are the priorities? And, and, you know, yep. Okay. Probably can't go too deep tonight without the 
document in front of us. Okay. Okay. Can I ask a question about an ongoing situation? Is, can we do that without? You can't okay. have open, dis open, like a lot of discussion, but what's your question? That uh, one on Belzac Road, the little cottage there, what's the, what's the latest status on that whole fiasco? Oh. North Road? Uh, North, North Road, Road, I meant, yeah. So he, I believe, is, his permit, I believe, has expired at this point. But he's not technically in violation because the do nothing, like, I have to talk with council about this and I've let the building department know because I, I find it hard to believe that the building department has no ability to do anything there, to make them do anything. Really? Well, I, I don't, I, they're aware, like, I, nothing has been done and I'm not, I'm not throwing the building department under the bus by any means, um, but I find it hard to believe that there's no action that can't be taken there. Um, as far well, as conservation, if it's, we, we were not able to get a good quote for services to determine whether this was an imminent threat. I mean, that was months ago. This right. thing's underwater pretty frequently now. Um, I have not heard anything from Mr. Smith in months. Um, I don't, I don't know if this is considered a threat to the public health and safety at this point or not in the condition that it's in and I don't know what legally what rights we would have. What about the, is the sand still uh, washing down into the river from behind the bulkhead? Yeah. yeah. How can that not be a, a violation? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I mean, we talk about shellfish habitat all the time. No. Yeah. I don't see that. If there wasn't a, a thing. if there wasn't a no, if there wasn't a bulkhead there, that bank would naturally be eroding anyway. I don't see it as a. It's not a huge volume that's coming out, and okay. that bank would naturally be eroding without that bulkhead. But it would also be vegetated, and it's not. Yeah. There isn't anything there except what there's there for structure. Again, I. I'm kind of at a loss of what we can do at this point. Wow. Um, but I will reach out to council. Again, I just don't know. I don't know what rights we have. Well, I believe it would be prudent to speak with council and see how we can appreciate this because that clearly needs to change. <laughs> that, uh, in the same kind of train of thought, what about the house over there on Lothar Avenue behind the church? That, uh, supposed to tear part of it down. What, how, yep. what, what's the so status that, on that? Yeah, we can get it up. I can't talk. We cannot talk about that. Okay. Um, this is, that's executive session, which we will have an executive session at least on May 1st. Okay. So we can certainly talk about that then. Right. And I can have an update. That is going, that is at, in through the court process at this point. I will say that. And final judgment is imminent. That's all I can say about that. Mm -hmm. Well. Okay. I have a couple other things if we're wrapping up. To, to go back to the Bell's Neck yep. plan, mm -hmm. what are the thoughts on um, next steps? Um, is the next agenda light? Is it heavy? It's me medium. <coughs> it's medium. I will definitely, again, we had a um, personnel issue. Um, that and not, not as many things got finished as I had thought. So I am optimistic for next week or next meeting having the final final available for you at least, or at least we could talk about priorities and the water management plan. So um, for those so things for next the meeting. The water ma management plan. There is existing text. Yeah. That, yep. And who, who wrote that? Where did that come from? So we, we wrote, you know, we, we had a naturalization plan that was voted on like in 2021. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Option number two was the approved plan right. that the commission w liked. Um, that came with language on what the, uh, the, the water management plan would be with option two. And it's like not even a page, it's a series of bullets, um, how you, you, you send water through, how you account for mosquito control. Yeah. Um, it, it really just a series of bullets mowing around the perimeter that was in it just a series of bullets that in it um it was it was voted to approve and it, it got lost in one of the drafts it um it, i don't i think it was meant to be in the appendix 
and it's I don't think it's there now. And so Fine. to me that's the plan of record and I think it'd be great to hit you know, to have people look at it again and think about it, but we should probably also get input from our new natural resource director as well as mosquito control again, at least before we give it our blessing. Sure. I mean, I, I saw them out there twice this week. Mm -hmm. They were they were out there. Yeah, they've been out. They, I mean, their approach is pretty simple. They want flow through. Yep. They they don't want standing water. Right. And um, we don't we we want that too. We don't want herring getting caught. So there's a bullet on managing the screens. Mm -hmm. it, it's all kind of common sense water mm -hmm. management. But I, that's something I think that uh, we should include. We, the commission previously voted on it, so it, it should fly. But it wouldn't hurt to have people look at it again mm -hmm. and just think of something to be adjusted. It talks about mulling plants in the perimeter, things like that. So, do you think you'll be able to get that into the draft prior to next meeting? I am very hopeful. I'll send you it. I, I, I have it. Thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm very. I, I'm hopeful. I'm yeah. If I have to do Cut. extra it, stuff, I'm not opposed. Move things along. If you send what you take to be that draft to Amy and have Amy just send that as I a can separate do that. bit of text, sure. mm -hmm. she wants to give everybody a chance to review it. Yep. If you can, get it into the document as well. But mm -hmm. it, it just share the text sure. because I think people will want to look at that and review it and think about it. And yeah. Then we can have a meaningful conversation mm -hmm. about it. I'll send that right out. To me, it's central to the, the task of managing the conservation land is mm -hmm. how to manage water flow. Yep. And I, I think it's a murderous task to, to deal with all this track changes and the cut and paste, and, and, and that's, yeah. that's, it's a, that's been part of it. I've been, taking, taking, I've been getting rid of all those track changes because I can't even digest the document. Um, okay. I, yes. I think if you, you roll all my comments up from my last review, it, it's it's just not a lot. All right. I, I think you can go through it pretty quickly, and it's really you know a, a last chance to look at some of the the prioritization and mm -hmm. that type of thing and and think about it. We I mean we we're not even we, we've talked about blueberries plantings uh, that's really not in it. Yeah. Um, it really hasn't been in it at any point in time. Do you want to insert something like that in it? This is this is a place that's to do that. Time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I would actually suggest that you send the document to the commissioners almost as it is. Sure. I mean, if you, I mean, a lot of the changes that are in there now. I mean, Brad well, added uh, the some document content changes, but there's a lot of just little things you can just accept because they're just there's copy edits. They're just Prior to Brad's most recent comment, like at your, the last meeting, I handed out, and I'm happy to give it to anybody else who wasn't here. Um, I did hand out a clean copy, but any of the new stuff is not right. in it. John and I reviewed that. Yes. And uh, John's, your comments were added onto mine. Right. So there's one document now that has both of our comments. Yep. Well, yep. I could add send the, that out as send, it is. Yeah. Send it. And then I'll send the management plan, which is like a page, yep. as a separate document. Perfect. And um, yeah, and go from there. It's. Um, I think it's getting close. It is. It's really pretty clean. I just need like a few hours where I can shut myself and, and not deal with anything else. <laughs> like how often does that happen? Never. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> Ever. Okay, I plan so for it. It doesn't happen. Anything else? I think I sent you all an email about the April 27th um, health and first annual health and environment <coughs> fair in the town of Harwich. Um, so we were we always do tour to trash on that last Saturday of April. The health department approached me and said, "Hey, we're doing a health fair. Do you want to come by?" And I said, "Yeah, only if I can bring on some more conservation folks." Um, so that that being said, if Division of Marine Fisheries is interested in having a table. Let me know. This? So it's going to be at the 204, the Cultural Center. What's the date? On April Saturday, April 27th. We have probably 40 different, um, not vendors, but a lot of nonprofits, both in the health and environmental field, mm -hmm. coming. We're doing a trash cleanup, giving a seedlings away for Arbor Day. Have 
food trucks and games for kids wow. and yeah, it's a big thing. Um, we have Atlantic White Shark Conservancy coming, APCC coming, Natural Resource Conservation Service coming. So yeah, if Division of Marine Fisheries wants to come, you're more than welcome. You invited me to a talent show, which I declined. <laughs> maybe, maybe I shouldn't decline this. <laughs> um, if yeah. you don't have, but I, anybody else, if you know anybody too, but we have, we still have table space available, and it's. It's centered around like Earth Day, Earth Week, and Arbor Day, and all that. Yep. So, how about Center for Coastal Studies? Are they around? We yet? reached out to them. I have not heard back. We we set up booths at four herring festivals this spring. Oh wow! Most spring, so it would be hard for me to take one of those setups and yeah. and bring it there. Uh, there might be one in Harwich. You probably heard the Board of Selectmen voted to have a one-day celebration. Yes. And um, I haven't heard when that's going to be, but it, it could be a similar type of spread. So yeah, let me uh, let me see if if I'm have any obligations, but yeah, that'd be fun. It's four hours. It's eleven to it's three. A herring festival. Yeah. Well, what does that consist of? I'm just curious. It sounds interesting. So the the board of selectmen considered having a herring harvest this year. Mm -hmm. They have an approved plan. They they debated it, and I think that the the new DNR chief Don just felt like just it's too fast. There's too much going on to make it happen. So the discussion was to not have a harvest this year. And that was decided upon. But then there was discussion of having a one day festival to celebrate the herring run. Um, Pembroke has one, Plymouth has one, mm -hmm. um, Middleborough has one. I think those are the three. There's, there's another one somewhere. And um, two of these places, they, they cook a few fish. We give them a permit to cook a few fish and serve it so people can have some fish. The other two, they just celebrate the fish. They have a booth, a couple booths, mm -hmm. and they talk about conservation and protecting the run. Um, in this case, Harwich has an approved plan. They don't need a permit from DNF to cook a few fish. Hmm. So I think that's what the Board of Selectmen yeah, is looking interesting. for. Yeah, you know, so if you know anyone who has any recipes, let me know. <laughs> I'll no, probably, I'll I probably don't, not for herring for roll, yes, but not for, for herring roll. themselves. <laughs> I'll probably brine a few. Yeah, small fry them up in some cornmeal and bacon yeah. fat and yeah. But education. Not attack city, but they're good. <laughs> <laughs> Outreach, education, um, a, a good vehicle. You know, if the festival happens, I hope it happens. It might be good to have a joint commission department booth yeah. on site. You know, and, yep. and to answer questions. Mm -hmm. so That's interesting. We had something a couple of years ago, and I forget if it was Earth Day or what it was there at the reservoir, maybe yeah. six, seven years ago, and it, it was it was fun. The kids liked it. Mm -hmm. So. Um, yeah, maybe uh, I'll set something up for this thing, and then um, I think I'm intrigued by the food trucks. That <laughs> that alone, <laughs> that's got my interest. We're trying to like appeal to a variety of demographics to come, and it, it's a great. There's going to be a lot of resources for mm -hmm. everybody, so you can get your blood pressure checked. You can get a tree. Mm -hmm. What do you want? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that, that's fun. All right, I'll have some handouts. So. I'll, um, I'll email you, um, okay, and I'll Carrie Scherner, our health director, is kind of the one keeping track of all the tables. Um, but yeah. Okay. Thanks. I need volunteers to you help. Could have a skin so. pond table. Could. I'm not going to be here that weekend. Oh. But whatever. <laughs> all right. some other people to get involved. The Cape Cod Anti-Litter Coalition is coming. Wow. So, a lot of citizen activist groups. Good. Okay. All right, I'll make a motion. We adjourn the meeting. Second. All those in favor? Aye, aye, aye. aye.